Hi everyone, welcome to another awesome access, er, session of Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. My name is Joe Gorowski and we're joining uh, Jean Pennycook live from Cape Royds in uh, Antarctica. And a little surprise today, um, it was listed as a session uh, from her camp, but uh, it's such a nice day that she's actually out with the penguins today, so it should be a really fun call. Um, we have classrooms joining us from um, all over North America, from uh, Capus Gasing and Sarnia in Ontario. We've got classes from Texas, California, and Deerfield, uh, Illinois, as well as in Michigan. So, uh, Jean, I'd like to let you take over and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. Okay, so first of all, I want to say that I'm in Antarctica. Lots of people think that I'm up at the North Pole at the polar bears and the reindeer, but I'm actually at the South Pole. So our seasons are reversed here in the Southern Hemisphere. So even though it's like negative 5 degrees here, this is the middle of the summertime. And since it's the middle of the summertime, the penguins are breeding. Normally they spend their lives at sea, living on the ice, but right now they're here at Cape Royds breeding. They need to find a place that is free of ice and snow and has small rocks so they can build their nests. There's nothing here. There's no bushes, no trees, no grass. There's nothing to build their nests out of except these small rocks. And only or less than 1% of Antarctica has these conditions, <clears throat> hence the birds are here. And since the birds are here, that's where I am too. So we come here every year from about October to the end of January, and we monitor, study these birds, see if their population is getting bigger or smaller. We weigh and measure the chicks to see if the parents are bringing back a good supply of food and see if that changes from year to year. We also count them, things like that. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see the penguins and then I will let you let the classrooms ask questions. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right. Try it again. There we go. So you should be able to see the penguins in a second. They're sitting on their nest. We don't have any chicks yet. The, each of the birds that is lying down is on a pile of rocks with two eggs underneath them. There are no chicks here yet. We have about another week to go before we'll see our first chick, and then it will be total chaos here. The parents will be going back and forth. There will be lots of noise, lots of energy. So right now we're kind of enjoying the quiet. But these birds will, really, in another week, we're going to start to see the chicks hatch, which is a great time. So I'm just going to leave the camera here. We'll see if anybody comes by or if anybody stands up and you can see their eggs. And I'll let Joe um, send some questions to me. All right. Great, Gene. Um, let's see. Let's turn on Mr. Southward's class uh, in campus casing and see if they have a question or two for you. Julia's going to ask a question. Yeah, make sure they come nice and close and nice and loud so Gene can hear. Okay, just one second. One right after. Nice and close, Julia. All right, here we go. Can swim in warm water? What's the question? Can the penguins swim in warm water? Got it. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, they, these birds do not like warm water. They're not well kept in zoos because they have to have below freezing temperature all the time. Even here, the water is below freezing temperature. It can be that way because it has salt in it. And anything above freezing, and these birds start to suffer. So no, the answer is they, they don't like warm water. All right, let's grab one more question from your class, and then we'll visit another class. Interesting. How many minutes can penguins swim? Underwater. Did you 
you hear that? Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear it. How many minutes no. can penguins swim underwater? So, yeah, how many minutes can penguins swim underwater? Can the penguins... Okay, uh, these penguins can hold their breath for about five minutes. The emperors, the very large penguins from March of the Penguins, if you saw that movie, can hold their breath for about 20 minutes. And we only know this because we put devices on their backs, and the devices tell us how long they're down, how far down they go, and how many dives it takes to get the food they need to feed their chicks. So these devices are about as big as your thumb. We stick it on their backs for very short periods of time, only like one or two days, and that's how come we know. And these guys, five minutes. Great question. So I'm going to turn on Mrs. Gibson's class microphone now. They're in Illinois. Uh, would you guys like to ask a couple questions? Okay. Yes. Go. Uh, can can the penguins find food under the ice? Yes, that's a very good question. Most of their food is under the ice. The little shrimp creatures called krill, they're about as big as your small finger, they actually live under the ice. And so the penguins like to live on top of the ice. And when they're hungry, they jump in and go underneath the ice and pick off all the krill. So there's krill in the open ocean too, but a lot of the krill is underneath the ice, so that's a really good question. How do penguins uh, live in that cold water? Well, these penguins are highly adapted to being here in Antarctica. First, they have a layer of fat in their bodies that keeps them warm, and then they have this giant coat of feathers. The feathers, if you make a circle with your finger and your thumb, there would be a hundred feathers inside that circle for each part of these birds' bodies. They have thousands and thousands of feathers. The feathers aren't very big, but they're tightly packed together, kind of like the shingles on the roof of your house. And the feathers not only keep them warm, but keep them dry. So they're very adapted to surviving in this cold environment. They love it. Myself, not so much. <laughs> and if I fell in the water, I'd be in trouble pretty fast. But these guys love it. All right, another great set of questions. I'm going to turn on our uh, grade three class this is microphone from Texas. Hi. This is the Morris class. If you have some questions. Yes, we do. Hi, my name is Google from San Antonio, Texas. What 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 caused me to do this? Yes, what inspired Is that the question? Yes, that he asked what inspired you to take up this job. Okay. Um ever since I was very young, I wanted to work with wild animals in the wild. I did some work at zoos, but that wasn't what I really wanted to do. I wanted to be in the wild. So my degree is in wildlife and fisheries biology, which allows me to be a field biologist. I also have a, a master's degree in science education, and I did some time as a high school science teacher. But now I do this, and this allows me to come to Antarctica and be with the penguins. These birds are great. They can't hide. There's no place to hide. And they're not afraid of me. I can sit this close to them, and they will run away. So that is why I was inspired to work here and work with these particular birds. They're fantastic creatures. He asked, "What is the population?" I got as far as the, what is the population of these birds? I think that's right, Jean. What's the population? Any birds are here? Yep. Okay, it's been answer the question how many birds are here? There, we just did a 
count a few days ago, we actually clicker in our hands and actually count the birds. And we have about 1,800 nesting sites. Our population at this, there's a colony around the corner from us. 500 birds there, and the rest of our team is there. Okay. Um, great questions. I'm going to turn on the mic for our class in California, Mrs. Cherry's class. All right, nice and loud if you have some questions. How does the climate change affect the penguins? Well, that's such a good question. And right, right here at Cape Floyds, we're not seeing a lot of climate change affecting these birds yet. We are the southernmost colony, so still things are very normal here. However, in the part of Antarctica that is up close to South America, have your teacher show you on the map where that is. That's much more north of here, and the ice has gone away there. And remember, these birds live on the ice. So if you went outside and you cut down all the trees, the birds would have to go someplace else because they live in the trees. Well, the ice is all gone, and so are the birds. There are reasons of these birds, and now there are none. They, they absolutely have had to go someplace else. So that is a direct result. All right, do you have another question for Jean? Yeah. How does... How does overfishing affect the penguins? Question over some dramatic. There, people uh, are starting to harvest the krill that the penguins eat. So that means that the penguins don't get enough food and can't feed their chicks. They're also starting to take the big fish, the Antarctic toothfish, they call it Chilean sea bass in the market, but it's really the Antarctic toothfish. And since they take that fish, that is the meal for the whales. And if the whales don't have the fish to eat, they've started to eat the penguins. So that is how they're affected. All right. Um, let's visit our grade ones in Michigan. Your microphone's on if you have a couple questions. Can a penguin have three eggs? Can a penguin have three eggs? Uh, was the question how many eggs do they have? It was a bit more specific. Can they have three eggs? Oh, okay. Um, they don't lay three eggs. Sometimes an egg will roll into a, a nest and they will brood that egg, but we rarely see them hatch three chicks. That would be very, very rare. And if they do hatch three chicks, it's very difficult to raise three chicks. Too much food for them to have to bring back. We do see nests with three eggs in them, and I've got one right in front of me here. But my guess is that they're not all going to hatch. So that, that's very sad. Probably the female did not lay three eggs. Probably one rolled in. How do you get to how do you get supplies? How do you get supplies? Uh, can you, oh, how do we get supplies? Well, that. Here is a search base called Doge. So we're about 20 miles, and if we need something, the helicopters will bring it to us. The only way to get to where I am is in a helicopter. So they fly back and forth and bring us stuff, but we try not to need anything. 
we try to bring out at the beginning of our season everything we're going to need for two and a half months. Well, that's a good exercise. Sometimes make a list of all the food and things you would need for two and a half months. And we're pretty good at it at this point. This is my 10th year doing this, so I'm pretty, I got it down. <laughs> but if I really, really need help, they will come in a helicopter. But it's, um, we try not to ask for help. Okay, so we have five classrooms joining us today, but there's also about 10 or 11 classrooms who are just watching uh, the live feed via YouTube. So if you do have some questions, those classrooms who are just watching the live feed, there is um, an option to send your questions in to um, the event page, and I'll keep my eye on the event page just in case anyone sends in some questions. But for now, let's go back to our first class and let them ask one more question. So, Mr. Southward's class. Ocean. Front. All right. He's just making his way up here. Do penguins jump? Do penguins jump? Is that the question? Yeah. yeah. The, we see the penguins jump between the ice flows. So when they're out in the ocean and they're on these pieces of ice, and we call these pieces of ice ice flows, they don't like to go in the water because they're predators in the water. So they'll try to jump between the ice flows. And we see that all the time. They also have to jump out of the water. So we see them jumping out of the water. They don't always make it the first time, so that's how we entertain ourselves here. We go down and watch the birds jump out of the water and sometimes crash into the ice. Doesn't hurt them, but they have to try again. So yeah, these guys are really strong jumpers. Okay, well Jean, I have a question on the event page from a class in Florida. They're a grade 2 class. And they were wondering about emperor penguins. Do you or have you ever seen emperor penguins? We we do have the emperor penguins here. They don't breed here, so we don't see their chicks. But they do wander around on the ice. They never, ever come into the colony because these birds never, ever, ever come on to land. They're too big and fat to get off the ice and walk up the hill. So they're only down on the ice, and if they're down there, I go down and see them because they're magnificent creatures. So yes, they are around. However, I have not seen any in about a week, so they're, they're just not here right now. Okay, great question. So the classrooms who are watching live, um, don't forget that there is that option to put questions on the event page, and I'll try to get to some of them. Uh, Mrs. Gibson's class, your microphone's on again for another question. How many miles an hour can a penguin swim? How fast can a penguin swim? Well, I'll just answer that. They can swim about five miles an hour, and they porpoise. They don't swim like fish. They have to come up in, for air every um, few meters. We call it porpoising, and when they're doing that, they're about five miles an hour. They probably have bursts of speed that are faster than that when they're trying to get away from a predator, but that's their average speed. Okay, so I've got another question from a class that's watching. They're a first grade class in Missouri, and they're wondering if the penguins ever slip and fall on the ice when they're walking around. If they ever what? Joe, say again. If they ever slip on the ice, if they ever slip and fall. Oh, yes, they do. And it's wonderful fun to watch them. They misstep, they fall down, they slide around, they miscalculate all the time. Yeah, they, they do slip on the ice. But they have great feet. Um, with giant, not claws, but big uh, nails, and it does help them grip the rock and the ice so they get around. But yes, I have seen them fall. Okay, and another question just came in from a classroom in Alaska who are watching along. 
and they're wondering uh, if the penguins are aggressive. Are they ever aggressive? They are. They're aggressive to me if I get too close. So they allow me to sit here. I'm only a few feet away from them. But if I were to try and touch them, they would attack me and hurt. Even with all the clothing that I have on, uh, they're able to give me a, a decent bite or a bruise. They also attack each other if a bird gets too close to their nest. So they're very territorial on the nest. When they're not on the nest, they're less territorial. You can see this bird right here and her egg. Now she's down. Oopsie daisy. All right, uh, Mrs. Zamora, do your grade threes have another question for Jean? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. How many people are there with you? How hot did we get there? We there's we, only two of us here for the, and we stayed together for the two and a half months. So, yeah, and the rest of our team is out at the much larger colony, about 30 miles away from here, where there's a, lots more penguins. So this is a small colony, so we just have the two of us. And the warmest it ever gets here is freezing. And it has gotten close to freezing. And we keep thinking maybe, maybe today it will get warm, but it never does. Very, very rarely does it get above freezing. Okay, great question. Just looking at the event page again, I've got a question from a classroom in Wisconsin, and they're wondering, do the penguins have any predators besides the leopard seals? Um, the killer whales will go after them. We don't see that here so much, but they in other areas the killer whales will go after them. Also, we've seen the or we've heard of the fur seals going after them, not not as much as the leopard seals, but they do. And then here on land, the only predator is the skua that goes after the eggs and the chicks. The skuas can't go after the adults. The adults are safe, but um, the schools do take the eggs. In fact, the one just came here about a minute ago and took an egg. Uh, so that's why the birds have to stay on the nest. Okay, great question. Um, Michigan, our grade ones. Uh, Mrs. Balo's class. Your mic's on again. How will they make the parents? So, uh, Joe, can you help me with the question? Yeah, that was how long do they stay with their parents, the penguins, the young? Oh, the, about um, six weeks, between five and six weeks for the parents to raise the children, and then they're to disappear on its own to do its final meal the ocean. So, yeah, five to six weeks. Okay, I've got another cl uh, question from the event page from a first grade class, Mrs. Bennett's class in Missouri, and they're wondering, um, oh, they're wondering if they could see the tent where you live, but I assume that's probably too far away. How far of a walk is it to the colony? Uh, about a quarter of a mile. It takes me about uh, 10 minutes. This guy's interested in my boots. Is he walks off. <laughs> Okay, um, what just came in here? Another class from Missouri, Mrs. Bird's class, they're first graders, and they want to know um, why some are standing and some are sitting. Some are laying down, some are standing. Uh, the ones that are laying down are on eggs. The ones that are standing up are what we call non-breeders. They, they didn't breed this year, or they did breed and they lost their egg. So they're just sort of hanging around, and because um, they don't want to go to the ocean, I guess, uh, don't really know what they're doing except hanging around. But every bird you see that is is laying down is on a nest with eggs. Okay, um, Mrs. Chair, I'm going to turn your microphone on for another question. How 
do penguins adapt to the cold? Well, they have they have very thick layer of fat on their body, and they also have lots and lots of feathers. So make a make a circle with your finger and your thumb, and inside that circle would be a hundred feathers. The feathers are very dense, and there's lots of them, and they're like the shingles on your roof. They lay they over lay each over other to keep the bird keep warm, the and warm and dry. And dry. Okay. Um, back to our event page. A few more questions have just popped up. Um, here's one from the second grade class in Florida, um, Mrs. Stouffer's class, and they're wondering, what do the baby penguins do when they first hatch? What's the first thing they do? They pretty much get underneath the parent and stay warm. So it's very cold and the little tiny chicks can't monitor their own heat. And they don't have enough feathers for probably two weeks to be on their own or outside the parent. So they get their bodies inside the parent's brood patch and stay warm. And then, they all, then the, in about a day they're looking for some food. So these parents better be ready to feed them in about 24 hours. Okay, well, Jean, we've been connected for about half hour now. Do you have time for maybe a couple more questions? Yeah, how about two more? All right, that sounds good. Let's, uh, I'll pick one classroom, and I'll pick one from the event page. So let's see. Let's visit um, our class in Texas, Mrs. Zamora's class. Do you have one more question for um, Jean? Yes. Uh, Joe, you're going to have to help me with that one. I think that was, what is the most maybe popular or most well-known penguin in Antarctica? Maybe the species, I think. Oh, gosh. I would have to say it's the emperor. Um, because of the movie March of the Penguin, I, it, it became an iconic uh, penguin. Okay, and just checking the event page, I've got a question um, from a first grade class in Wisconsin, and they want to know how long is the helicopter ride from uh, base camp to your camp? Uh, it's 15 minutes, and I never get tired of riding in helicopters. So if you guys are out there and you're thinking that I have a really great job, the answer is I do. And I hope some of you will decide to follow uh, into this field biologists. We have lots of mysteries yet to solve. And this is a wonderful, wonderful world to be in. So I hope a lot of you will think that this is a, a great profession to have, to work with animals in remote places. All right. Well, Jean, I can't thank you enough for another amazing connection, especially for the surprise of being in the penguin colony today. I know the classrooms were definitely excited to see that. Um, what I'm going to do now uh, is I'll turn the microphones on so the classes can say goodbye and thank you, and we'll sign off for today. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you everybody. Thank you, goodbye from Antarctica. All right. Microphones are turning on. Thanks to all the classes on camera today, well, as close to on camera as we could get, and thank you to all the uh, classrooms who were viewing live. We're signing off for today. Thanks so much, Gene.